Welcome back. <clears throat> All right, so um, I, I did say that last night I was going to review the Vegas Golden Knights and Utah Hockey Club game. However, uh, it was an interesting thing that happened with that. First off, it said, you know, 5 o'clock start time on Sportsnet Plus, and I was like, that's wrong. So 7 o'clock start time, I go in and I load up the feed, and it gives me an error on both my television and my laptop. And then the feed just disappeared. So I guess it didn't work. Uh, again, Sportsnet Plus, making me a little bit nervous before the regular season, but I guess working out the kinks in the off season, all that. So we'll see how it all turns out. Should be fun. I'm glad you guys are going to be along on the journey with me. All right, so that being said, so what I did last night instead was I just pre-recorded the, uh, the history video that went live this morning on the channel. So from last night's games, uh, some stats on the board, also some injury discussion we're going to have today. Uh, starting off at the top of the board with the Winnipeg Jets. They had a rough night last night. Uh, an 8-5 to loss against the Minnesota Wild. Chabrikov, Perfetti, each had a goal and an assist. So that's good news. If Chabrikov's going to get into the lineup, he's going to have to perform like that. And Perfetti, after signing his contract, played pretty well. Um, however, Connor Hellebuck, 21 saves on 29 shots. Get those bad games out of the way in the preseason. Get it, get it done, get it out of your system, and then you can move on and have good games after that. Uh, Eric Carlson. So this is one of those things that's been kind of <clears throat> mysterious. It's the preseason, so they don't tell us very much. But uh, he has an upper body injury, and he's not skating this weekend. He's been skating on and off uh, over the last week and whatnot. And when asked whether or not he'd play in the season opener, uh, the answer that I saw from Mike Sullivan wasn't very committal. So uh, I don't think that they know for sure whether he will or won't play. Um, they're, they're, I guess, hedging a little bit, but without Eric Carlson, that will affect the blue line in Pittsburgh. Obviously, we'll see if he misses any time during the regular season. It's just one of those things to keep an eye on. Um, Austin Matthews, also, uh, an injury that's kind of been obscure and, and odd and just one of those, ah, it's no big deal. So it's nothing. It's nothing. But he, he keeps missing practices here and there. Uh, and he's downplaying the missed practices as well as maintenance days, and they may very well be. But again, when you're Austin Matthews, you're a 60-goal scorer, people are going to notice when you're not in the lineup. That would make a huge difference to the Leafs if he missed any time. I also understand that teams are trying to make sure everybody's ready for opening night, but again, it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, Callie Yarncroke dealing with a lower body injury. He's day-to-day -day as well. Uh, Matt Duchesne had a good night last night against Colorado. Uh, two goals and an assist for Matt Duchesne, including a, a really nice net drive that went in. And so, yeah, Dallas gets the win over Colorado. It's preseason. It doesn't mean anything, but still, it's nice to see the wins here and there. Uh, Eric Sinek, in the game between Winnipeg and Minnesota, he had himself a night, didn't he? Two goals and three assists for Eric Sinek. And Husna Dinov, a goal and an assist for him in that 8-5 to five win over the Winnipeg Jets. So Husna Dinov, a player who I think has a lot of upside, really, offensively. Uh, he is likely to play in the bottom six, but he'd be one to keep an eye on for when injuries take place, and they take place for everybody. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye on Husna Dinov. Uh, last night's game between Columbus and Washington was a crazy affair, and... Malatesta had a really nice breakaway goal. So did Fantilli. But for Fantilli, the breakaway goal wasn't everything. Uh, he had a hat trick. So uh, the hat trick goal. Um, yeah, everything Fantilli does is great. And one of the reasons that I, I think Columbus could surprise some people, uh, despite the tragedy they've gone through in the offseason, they've got some pretty good young players. And if Fantilli's ready to take that next step, I think they'll win some games here and there. It's going to really come down to Fantelli's development combined with goaltending. If the goaltenders can keep the puck out of the net, uh, Columbus could surprise some people. Uh, Jack Eichel uh, getting into regular season form with a goal and two assists last night in that 5-2 to two win against Utah. That would have been fun to watch, but, you know. Uh, at any rate, Eichel, uh, a player to keep an eye on because he does tend to end up on the injured list during the season. So if he can stay healthy, it'll make a huge difference for Vegas, a team that has lost some some depth in the offseason and, and suddenly don't look quite as scary as they did not too long ago. Um, I'll go down to the bottom of the board first because the other two, are, other two items on the board are attached to one another. Uh, Nazem Kadri, uh, not at practice today for the Calgary Flames. 
Uh, I haven't seen anything from the team about how long he might be out or what we're dealing with here, but he did collide with Coleman yesterday. And I did have that on the board yesterday, the, the collision and him leaving practice early because it didn't sound good. It sounded like this might be something big. Kadri didn't miss a game for, for Calgary last season. And he is one of their veteran leadership group. And if he's going to be out for any period of time, that would that would definitely hurt them on the ice. Of course, we know they're in a retool slash rebuild, but uh, Kadri being out of the lineup could just make things a little bit worse for them. So Parik being sent down to juniors, uh, saying that he's humbled by what he uh, went through at, at training camp and seeing the work that NHLers put in. And the team seems to be really impressed with the player as well. So he was a first-round draft pick of theirs in June. Uh, there's a lot of excitement about Parake and whether or not he's going to be their future power play point man. That's the expectation anyways. And he's a fast skater. He's an excellent overall player. I did a whole profile on him uh, before the draft. And so we'll see how long it takes for him to join the Flames. I don't think it'll take him that long, I think. Probably next season he ends up on their roster. Just this season, he's better off going back to juniors. But he has the right attitude, and uh, Ryan Huska has nothing bad to say about him and talks about how he has certain skill sets you just can't teach. So that's all stuff to, to keep in mind there. So in last night's game between Seattle and Vancouver, uh, Winterton had a goal and an assist in the 3-1 to win for Seattle. Uh, Joey Decord saves 19 out of 20 in the victory. Um, and so for Seattle, this is them getting that win back. So they lost against Vancouver the last time they played them. They win this one as we try to get that rivalry between Seattle and Vancouver going, right? But the, the, what I've seen from Vancouver media fans, there's some concern. There's some concern about the way the team's playing. The team's two and one in the preseason. The record doesn't mean anything in the preseason, but it is just the preseason. So going back to some of the other games last night, Washington loses 8-4 to four against the uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Winnipeg loses 8-5 to five against Minnesota. It's, it's preseason. It doesn't really mean anything. Where I get concerned is with individual players. If individual players are having a really bad preseason and they're just not dialed in at all, I do get concerned. Uh, but again, that's that's difficult because for the veteran players, you're just trying to get through these games, not get hurt, keep the systems in mind, and go out there and play the game as best you can. Uh, nobody's playing a full lineup of their NHL team. Even looking at the Canucks last night, they had a number of veterans in the lineup. They also had some guys that are not going to be playing for the Vancouver Canucks to start the season. So I don't think there's any reason for anybody to worry about the preseason um, I had even thought about doing a list video on things about the preseason. Uh, definitely seeing, oh, this goaltender isn't any good. Like, I do expect there to be some hellebuck comments on how he played last night, but the games don't matter. Uh, and then we get into early October, and we get into the regular season, and eh, teams might get off to 3-0-1 starts that aren't very good. Teams might get off to 0-3-1 starts that are actually going to make the playoffs and be pretty good. But, uh, you know, it's it's just it's the nature of things now with sports and the the 24 7 news cycle and i i do think there's probably more concern than necessary about and i i'm using the canucks as an example but they're not the only one so i just thought i'd throw that out there but hey thank you guys so much for all your support as always hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about anything on the board or stuff not on the board sure why not but thanks for your support i will talk to you guys soon